Hello, hi, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Stu Brown, I'm SO1 People, I work here at RHQRE in Chatham and I just want to give you a quick people update. Uh, the first issue is pay. So the Joint Service Job Evaluation Team have come around and had a look at nearly every trade in the Corps uh, just to see what pay supplement all our trade should be in. If you were involved in those demonstrations, thank you. It's been absolutely fantastic and I can safely say to everyone that the Corps could not have done any more to either justify the pay supplements we've already got or to argue for an increase. We won't know what the results are until July next year roughly um, and for implementation in the year 2021. Um, so let's just see how that goes but if you played a part in it, a massive thank you. You did a brilliant job. The next bit then is to do with the Combat Engineer Career Stream, so we are almost there in getting the, the instructions right on telling, on telling you how you can apply to join the Combat Engineer Career Stream in the regular part of the call. And what that means is, is that you would uh, leave your current trade at Class 2 and focus the rest of your Army career on being nothing but trained to be a combat engineer and employed in that way. We are nearly there. Uh, the intention is to get the plan out before Christmas so that applications can be made and the first batch of 60 soldiers, who are limited to no more than 60 a year, can move into the combat engineer career stream on or just off the 1st of April in 2020. And now to cyber. Uh, so cyber is a huge subject across national defence. It's a really important subject and we've realised that across the Royal Engineers we've got people who are really good at this not because the Army's trained them to be that yet, it's just they have the skills themselves, it's something they've developed and picked up. If this is something you can do and something you are interested in, then there's now the opportunity to go for selection to become a military or defence cyber operator. And, that we've, and if selected, you would go off and do that for some, if not all, of the rest of your military career. So get out there and look for it, I'm just going to check my notes, and it's out there in Army Briefing Note 11019, and that gives you all the details you need to go and apply for cyber. If this is for you, please do consider applying. It's a really important subject. For the Clark Works and the MPFs, we're now bringing out a new uh, form of managing the cornerstone appointments that Clark Works and MPFs have to go through uh, in order to pick up all those competencies required to become fully effective uh, in their role throughout their career as a Clark Works or an MPF. The details are just about to come out, so be aware that this is on the way and it should hit the streets early in 2020. Okay, and now about transfers. So there's a people policy note released uh, and it's available on the RHQRE SharePoint site and it directs exactly how people coming into the Corps can be qualified to be a Royal Engineer for the rest of their military career. Um, and it, it allows people to come in from all ranks, from all branches of defence. And at the same time, we're also working with the RAF and Royal Tank Regiment so that anyone who wants to come across the 2A Engineer Regiment and they've got CBRN skills and that's where they want to employ them specifically, well, we will make sure that anyone who's coming across in that way, especially those coming from the RAF into the Army and into the Royal Engineers, are treated like an individual, treated like an adult, and all of the current terms and conditions of service you have with the RAF will be honoured if you come into the Army. More on that to follow in the new year, and we'll take it from there. So you may have heard that we are looking at creating a new trade in the Royal Engineers. And what we're actually doing at the moment is looking at the armoured, the driver, and the plant operator mechanic trades and seeing if they can be merged. Because if you look at those three trades, there's a lot of common skill sets between them. Now, I don't know what the final result of this review is going to be, but if you've heard about this going on, then it's true that we are having a good look at it. The work is currently being looked at by what's called the Warrant Officer Working Group, which works for the Corps Sergeant Major. It's a selection of Warrant Officers from those trades affected from across the Corps, plus some LE officers who have an experience in that trade. Um, and just look at, should we do this? Could we do this? And is it the right thing to do? And we're nowhere near making a decision on this yet, but it will go to the Brigadiers probably in spring, and I'll keep you updated as we go along. Suffice to say, we're having a look at it, and let's see where it takes us. And now on the physical side of life, uh, so the annual fitness test is being replaced. It's being replaced this year, or rather into 2020, and it's going to be a test that's specifically designed for those in the engineers. Other cat badges will have their own test. And so this week, and we're in the first week of December, soldiers from across the Corps will be trialling the new tests. It'll be trialled again through January and February. So if you're uh, selected for those tests, please give it, a, give it your all. But it's important to make sure that the tests are attended by a representative bunch from across the Corps. And what we'll then end up with is a test that we'll all be expected to do probably from June 2020 when it will start to kick in. Um, and that will be a mixture of tabbing, 
patrolling as well as lifting weights etc. And if you have a good look at what the infantry and cavalry are doing right now, our test will be very similar to that. That's an indicator of what's coming around in 2020. And to finish, uh, work is ongoing now by Lieutenant Colonel Andy Gooch uh, to create a new Officers Career Management Manual. That will be the management manual will be for both regular and reserve officers. Um, and we're not quite sure whether it's actually going to be a book or whether it's going to be a portal where you can go and get all the relevant information. But what it will do is bring into one place how to manage an officer in the RE or QGE and how to write about them because the last chapter of it will be an MS directive that will say exactly how to write on our officers. It's worked a real treat for the soldiers and we hope to replicate that for our officers too. So that's the people update done. All I want to do is wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and another update to come early in 2020. All the best.